Hi, I'm Ryan with Michigan Truck Spring, truckspring.com. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about brake chambers. Brake chambers are used on heavy duty trucks and trailers to convert energy from compressed air into force used to apply the brakes. There are two main types of brake chambers used, service chambers and spring brakes. Service chambers apply and release the brakes and serve only one function, where spring brakes perform double duty, applying and releasing the brakes and also providing a parking and emergency brake when air pressure is lost. In this video, I'll talk to you about each type, explain how they work and the components inside of them. First, I'll start out with service chambers. The service chamber's only job is to apply the brakes when air is sent to the chamber and to return to a neutral released position when air is removed. Service chambers will be referred to by types ranging from type six to type 36. On the table here, I have a type 20. The type number relates to the area in square inches that the air acts on, so this decides the amount of force that the service chamber is capable of. Chamber types can be identified by markings on the chamber. This has SC20L, or they can be measured across the clamp area. And this chamber measures about six and five eighths inches. Service chambers are simple in operation and only contain three components inside. A diaphragm, a push rod and push plate, and a return spring. When air is applied to the chamber, the diaphragm pushes forward on the push rod and push plate, applying the brakes. When air is released, the springs in the wheel end and brake assembly, as well as the return spring in the diaphragm, pull everything back into a neutral release position. Besides the type number, there are also standard stroke and long stroke variants of service chambers. A standard stroke is a two and a half inch stroke and a long stroke will have three and a half inches of stroke or more. They can normally be identified by markings on the chamber. This is a type nine and on the clamp, it shows a type nine and on the chamber diaphragm, it shows a T9. The other chamber I have here is a 20 type service chamber long stroke which is identified by the number stamped into the chamber, SC20L. Next, I'll talk about spring brakes. Spring brakes are split into two sections that perform different jobs. The front section acts as a service chamber. It has the same internal components, the diaphragm, push plate, push rod, and return spring. But the rear section houses a very powerful spring that acts as a parking brake or an emergency brake when air pressure is removed. The rear section is non-serviceable and you should never attempt to open it. The spring inside this rear section has upwards of 2,000 pounds of force. It can easily injure or kill you. Anytime you perform service on a spring brake, use a caging bolt or a T-bolt to restrain the power spring to make it safe for service. This is a cutaway spring brake that has the power spring disabled so you can safely see the internal components. There's a piston assembly, which is the link between the parking side and the service side with a center sealing o-ring keeping the air pressure separate between the two chambers. The power spring pushes the piston assembly forward, forcing the service side to apply when air is released from this back chamber. The air would be released either by using the parking brake in the truck or by an unexpected release of air when it acts as the emergency brake. There is a diaphragm that pushes the spring into a release position when air is applied, and there is a return spring that ensures everything returns to a neutral position when the brakes are released to ensure that there's no interference between the service side and the parking side. It's important to pay attention to the type of spring brake you have when replacing them. They come in long stroke and standard stroke variants, which are pretty easily identified. The standard stroke have round bosses for the air inlets, where the long stroke will have square. Long stroke chambers will also have a larger center body with markings that will identify them as a long stroke and most of them will come with a tag that identifies them as a long stroke chamber. They also come in different type chambers or these are both a 30-30. These have a 30 type spring brake and a 30 type service brake. This chamber is a 24-30. This has a 24 type service chamber and a 30 type spring brake. You can see that the body changes diameter as it moves up to the service brake portion. 
Even though the parking brake is non-serviceable, the entire assembly can be replaced with a piggyback assembly while leaving the service chamber portion alone. Just simply cage the spring brake with a caging bolt, remove your air lines and your front clamp ring. Install the piggyback assembly with the new clamp ring, attach your air lines, remove this caging bolt, and you're as good as new. Hopefully this video has clarified the inner workings of brake chambers. If you still have questions or need help identifying replacement parts or brake chambers, give us a call at 1-800-358-4751 or reach out to us at truckspring.com.